Thank you for tuning in to Producer Circle. I'm your host, Gabe Castro. And on this episode, we are going to be focusing on experimental media, developing ideas, and telling non-linear stories. And I have invited two phenomenal producers here today to talk about their work, about best practices, advice, and uh, how to get your thoughts out there in this medium. So I'd like to invite uh, Nicole Gray, producer of Indigo and Green, as well as her short film, which is lengthy. I'm going to go through it. <laughs> the Institute of Infinite Possibilities Guide to Portal Construction and Field Kit for Present Moment Documentation and Evidence Collection, now integrated with the Evocation Playbook with, with Bonus Guided Daydreams. Um, and J. Eliza Wall, who is a longtime member and producer of short film Ovule. Um, so welcome, both of you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thanks for having us. It is a thrill to have you on and to talk about um, your processes, how you got, you know, these ideas together, these very unique pieces, and also how the other work that you create is um, influencing the the media that you are making. So um, I will go and just introduce uh, the two guests a little further, and then we'll dive into what you all um, have been working on. So first, uh, we'll go over here with Nicole, who is a natural color alchemist, educator, and textile artist. As a producer and host of Indigo and Green, Nicole documents the exploration of natural color and the creation of plant-based art materials through craft project tutorials, art experiments with maker friends, and field trips to green spaces in Philly. And you can catch uh, Indigo and Green here on Philly Cam. Uh, what is your time slot? Saturdays at 9 a.m. Saturdays at 9 a.m. Excellent. Then we have uh, J. Eliza Wall, who is um, a Philadelphia artist, writer, filmmaker, and art educator. Her work explores various topics, including the human condition, family dynamics, relationships, nostalgia, connection to nature, and mental and physical health, and in an attempt to restore connections in a fractured world. She believes that art is a powerful tool that can generate change and healing on a local and global level. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, <laughs> definitely see that honestly in both of, of your work um i'd love to hear from both of you so you participated in the uh termite tv 30th 31st anniversary uh portal show which is a combination of programs where you were creating things on your own under this uh, unified theme of portal so could you tell uh, the audience a bit about um what your piece was about and the pieces of that that are uh, the portal. Uh, let's start with you, Joy. Sure, so um, my piece is called Ovule and it refers to um, uh, plant anatomy and specifically the ovule is part of the ovary that contains the female germ cell uh, and after fertilization, it becomes the seed. So I really focused on that word in particular because um, it was really kind of the overarching theme that I was trying to address with my piece, um, looking specifically at the womb as this portal to life. Um, and, you know, kind of how over years and years, society, humanity has really worshiped the womb as this kind of sacred portal from which all life comes. Um, so yeah, I really focused on that part. Uh, the piece really starts off with like the Big Bang, uh, focused on plants and life kind of sprouting and growing. And then it kind of zeroes in on more of like a personal story about my husband and I kind of going through the IVF process and uh, working with a gestational carrier to carry a biological baby for us. So kind of even looking at like womb as someone else's womb being a portal to like my future family, which was mm -hmm. like, a lot of different layers to it. Um, but I think the piece, uh, you know, is something that we can look back on as we've kind of been going through this journey, um, in addition to just being an amazing opportunity to connect with so many awesome creatives and how they interpreted portals as well. And just how Lee Sumter really kind of kicked things off um, with how portal could be, um, many different things and how society, you know, how humanity has uh, portrayed portals in film, in stories, um, in mythology. 
So I think her discussion really kind of just kind of set everything in motion as, you know, I was trying to kind mm -hmm. of develop um, my plan for the short film. Yeah, and it's a very like uh, intimate piece, right? It's um, it's quite entrancing, like watching it, you really get drawn in and, and there's this clear journey, even though it's it's kind of staggered in that way of like, you know, it's from the Big Bang to something that's so um, specific, right? Something that we, from this larger piece to something that is this intimate uh, moment that you're having. Uh, and I think that's in itself a portal. So um, really thankful that you've created it and that we can watch it. <laughs> uh, and then I'll move over to Nicole and we'll dive into the work more. So the other thing that we were sort of presented with, with in, in being involved in this workshop was looking at um, the pandemic as a portal mm -hmm. and that as a theme, as ways that we could interpret um, the pandemic as, as this way to change or look at things anew and then uh, see it as a space that we kind of pass through and then what we might be different how we might be different on the other side. It was the, there was a quote from the author Arundhati Roy and this article where it was talking about um, the pandemic as a portal. So I was thinking a lot about that time when creating this, this piece um, and ways to make sense of like the, mainly for like the beginning of the pandemic. And I had started keeping all these journals and I had this one journal where that quote that was cited for like the content of the the workshop was written in the journal and wow. it was just like I kept on finding all these things coming back to these journals and then I had this experience in a garden where it felt like I I was like overheating and I um thought I was going to pass out or get sick but I like ended up finding that I felt like I was like passing into some other kind of spiritual realm and like woke up in the garden like everything's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> messages and so I wanted to make sense of all of those things within this as uh, a, in a meaningful way um, and so I did it through this kind of structure of creating a manual for doing a visual journal and my, my journals have been very visual and during the pandemic I got they got increasingly more um, like collecting what was happening right now so that I might refer to it and understand like from this point that we are now, what, what happened then? Mm -hmm. um, so I broke it into 18 steps on how to create a portal to basically another time and space so that we can go back and make sense of what things are and connect to other realms, um, whether those are messages that we get from ourselves or maybe that we are seeking from ancestors or from the moments that we collected in the past, um, that I, I feel like these are the things that you can put into a book and then you can, uh, that was my portal for me at least. And so I went into it, I don't know, with five different iterations of what it could be, <laughs> in, but it ended up being this piece. And then um, I was really inspired by the collaborative uh, sense of the workshop and I was really surprised by the moments that we had overlaps. There was a lot of garden talk, a lot of ephemera and mm -hmm. um, my piece ended up being sort of broken into to pieces uh, to sort of give a structure to the larger piece in a sense where there were coincidentally themes that connected with the other other work that was contributed. It's quite interesting to think about how the work can be seen um, in this like solo way, right, of just wa watching your pieces individually, but then also seeing them grouped together and how those connections can be made. And um, there's also this interesting part about like taking something as intangible as like a portal and, uh, you know, these this capsule right of uh time and then using something that is tangible like these physical materials uh and repurposing them in that way to to create these journals and so i think it was just a, a really interesting way to look at it and when we're thinking of experimental media thinking of how we're you know telling stories in ways that uh kind of step outside of the the general way that we approach media, rethinking how we can uh, understand that, uh, even in thinking of time, right, that it's <laughs> it's not linear, it's a, it, 
we're not really experiencing it in that way too. Um, it shows really well in the programs that you've created. And I wanted to talk with you both because you're, you're, you're both um, artists outside of media making or, or like visual making and uh, film. Uh, but, you know, with Nicole, you're a textile artist. Uh, enjoy, you have, uh, you're a writer. And then you're both like creators outside of those things as well. And so I kind of wanted to talk about how uh, your other like artistic pursuits uh, influence your work in here or even any of the work that you create, how they're all kind of feeding into each other and uh, able to reshape what you are creating yeah so in my work I love documentation so I definitely experiment a lot um with plant material lately I I have a segment called will it ink just like find a plant that looks like <laughs> it has an interesting color can we make an ink will it be a dye I don't know let's try and <laughs> so I I like using film as a form of documentation and then um like I think my my uh sort of mantra or like goal for life is like to be in awe at least once a day and I get that a lot from the magic of plant alchemy you put a little bit of baking soda in with this one plant and it turns pink. Wow. You know, <laughs> and so you can really capture that when I'm uh, on film and slow it down and see it really like develop or take shape or change. And so I, I, I kind of, um, approach a lot of experimental stuff in film as just documentation of the experiments I'm doing otherwise. Um, I, I don't actually, <laughs> sometimes it fails. <laughs> so there, there was something very different about doing this experimental film as a collaborative with others where I was like, oh, well, it's fine if, if like I just get goo instead of ink in my mm -hmm. own world. But we, and, and the termite whole like um, structure is to really be about the process and experiment and try things. And I did a little bit of that and I found things I didn't really like, but at the same time, there were like some heavy hitter, major like art crashes of mine who were gonna create really fantastic stuff. <laughs> and so my product, I did have a little bit of interest in not having it just be, oh, well, I did an experiment. It was, an, it was interesting, it didn't go so well. Yeah. So this was a little bit different than what I do in sort of my, my um, own personal creative practice around experimentation. Uh, where I'm fine if it doesn't work out as a product, but the process is still fun and interesting and I collect the experiences and um, experiments and document them. But I, I really enjoyed like really committing to the process of experimentation with this group and um, they were really supportive and it was really wonderful. And I, I got some uh, good technical support from a lot of people too. <laughs> I tried something with uh, augmented reality at one point where I had a camera, my phone, my journal, which activated another video in it. So then it looked like several layers and it didn't really show exactly what it was, but I was really excited that I could do it. And then other people got excited about it and said, oh yeah, you should do it like this. And so um, it kind of launched me into thinking about new things too. Um, as a result of being in this collaborative and being experimental with other people that I could try something else in the future. Yeah, it's definitely a different um, vibe right? than, than where we're kind of siloed into our own little world and we can take different chances, but having like these guiding forces or people to support you uh, to yes and in certain ways and then to also explain like, how do you do that? Right? And um, even just as like, you know, newer creators of the specific medium or, um, you know, even in just every new project that we have, it's very helpful to have that community of other creators who can help influence that and uh, broaden uh, what the potential is for it. Um, and uh, Joy, why don't you tell us about yours? Definitely. Um, I related to a lot of what you were saying, Nicole, about just the, the process, the experimentation. Um, I think with my, you know, filmmaking journey, focused, I, I focused a lot on um, that obsessive documentation too. Like when I was younger, when I was about like 10, I got my first like video camera and just kind of obsessively was 
kind of capturing my life at 10 years old, which <laughs> not much going on at that age, but um, having that stuff to look back on and kind of pulling archival material in and weaving it into um, some of my short films, um, you know, as I've gotten older in my 20s and 30s, uh, there's definitely been some kind of profound insights that I've gained from that kind of like insights about like myself, about how the world has changed or how it's kind of remain the same in some regards. Um, during the pandemic actually is when I really started to get further into my creative filmmaking practice. And uh, one of the short films I put together was something called um, a short piece called Sacred, which was about five minutes. And that actually is like the feature of the, the main uh, focus of that is returning to this old video camera and kind of what I was able to capture at those ages. Uh, I also had kind of pulled in some things, uh, voice recordings from like a little voice recorder I had growing up as well. And I think those are things that definitely have um, found their ways into my short films and kind of the focus on storytelling. And, you know, I really love the, the um, just the serendipity of some like, experimental work right mm -hmm. like you have mm -hmm. like a loose idea that you want to explore but you don't hem yourself in where you kind of uh, miss out on certain magic which is like what mm -hmm. I really those little nuggets those little special moments um like Nicole like what you were mentioning and that garden with the heat and <laughs> the spirit <laughs> yeah. like those are just uh you know what is so special about life it it is chaotic and messy um but storytelling and combing over footage and finding themes um that kind of helps make sense of like what can feel very confusing or or you know random so i think that like a lot of what i do in my um filmmaking my art making is really kind of like understanding and synthesizing just all <laughs> what what my understanding of life is mm -hmm. yeah there's definitely that in, in both of your work right and in, in being influenced by this like journey and um, I think with experimental media too is like we don't have the set script right we don't know exactly what we're gonna get <laughs> we don't have people show up like okay we're gonna shoot this scene and it's gonna be exactly like this or we gotta redo it right instead it is let's like I have a kind of a, I got a hypothesis of what we might end up with let's see where it takes us I might be wrong I might be right um you learn something about the the process but also about yourself when you're creating those things and so um it's always really interesting to see this way that we can approach media in a, a looser way or just like a more flexible way uh to let life kind of change us <laughs> right? and take it take us where it needs to go um i did want to talk a bit about the some of the technical parts of what you were creating um and uh joy i had questions about uh like you, you mentioned there's photography that you use um, in Ovule. Is there like some of those videos that we were seeing, were those things that you taped? Were they um, like uh, public media, like files, archival footage, things like that? Like where did you gather all those resources um, to create the, the piece? Yeah, definitely. So uh, the the opening scene has a mixture of some, um, you know, nature moments that I've captured. Some are our uh, are footage from like Envato, which is like a like a subscription service where you can um you know find different footage. Mm -hmm. But the main kind of things included were like photographs and video of the IVF process. So like all of the different, you know, syringes and band-aids mm -hmm. and things like with that process. I use a lot of time lapse as well and a lot of different things I've made, um, specifically in Ovule 2 as well. Um, just kind of like capturing what I can um, and kind of speeding it up or slowing it down depending on you know how it serves the story. But yeah, just kind of throughout that whole process, I was just kind of documenting 
different physical objects um, using Photoshop to like get rid of the background. Mm -hmm. um, that's something I've kind of been doing since um, a previous project uh, called Monument, where my mom was moving out of our childhood home and I was trying to archive all of these little special objects that had memories attached to them and trying to, you know, if she couldn't take them all with her in some way, kind of like hold on to them and kind of put them in a, um, you know, a Google Drive, but then also put them onto like a little website called Padlet, which I use a lot to kind of like uh, feature different photography from or stills from a particular piece. Mm -hmm. So I think in in that process, what um, kind of like what's kind of happening with the background being removed is like you're really kind of focused on that specific object mm -hmm. and like your real your attention's really kind of like zeroed in, which I think is like the goal and it kind of makes it also feel a little bit sterile or like a little bit of distance from the object as well. Um, kind of as it were like in a museum setting or some sort of um, maybe even clinical setting. But there, it's also like weirdly therapeutic. Like I really, I just couldn't spend hours just mm -hmm. cutting out backgrounds, which sounds crazy. Uh, but there's like, there's something about it where you're focused on a particular object and it kind of simplifies things in mm -hmm. a certain way. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of a little bit about the kind of technical uh, things featured in that as well. I also included some audio from the um, egg, re egg retrieval procedure, like before and after. So like the lead up to it, like Caleb was just like talking to me about silly little things. And I had remembered that like when I was young, um, like I think like eight of eight years old or something, or maybe six or seven. Um, I like was wearing my bathing suit and I like stuffed all these beanie babies in there. <laughs> I like pretended I was like a little pregnant mom. And then yeah, it was just like a silly memory that like we thought of when I was there and it was captured. So it was like just these little moments kind of leading up to or through this process. Um, and then after the procedure and kind of like realizing like that was a lot, you know, um, and then getting like the total from the doctor and kind of like hearing like things are moving along smoothly. So kind of weaving in archival material, um, weaving in footage that's just been collected and kind of like suturing it and stitching it all together. Yeah, and in, in a way, it's uh, like immortalizing this in, this experience and those memories and things that uh, are easy to kind of forget when you're looking back at like the bigger image, right? It's just like, okay, I went through this whole experience, but then to be able to revisit those specific moments and, and to hear that story and for other people to um, also experience that story, right? Like there was, you know, I was just so excited where they're like, you're, you're looking good, like everything, <laughs> like you, you got good stuff. And I was like, oh, that's so wonderful. Um, <laughs> so so um, yeah, I was, I was just really, I, I'm always interested in how people are um, incorporating and finding footage that they're themselves not creating, but using and kind of transforming into something that works for for their piece, right? It, it evolves and becomes yours. And so uh, thank you for sharing that process. Um, Nicole, the question I had was about your, your AR piece that you described, but uh, I'd love to hear about your specific journals. And there's even like the process of like what you're doing in the little water thing, like the inking section. Oh yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, just let us know what you, what you, how you went through that process, what you're using in your piece. Um, okay. So I do a, all of this on my cell phone. I'm not usually, I took out a camera from Philly cam to shoot my phone mm -hmm. <laughs> and, was, and I took some, some stills with it as well, but um, I actually do a lot of the work just like with what I have, which is like, I have my phone and it does a great job. Um, I think a lot of like the process and the technical stuff, I, I um, it's like really 
Okay, let me think. I organized this in very similar, actually. I love what Joy has to say about the process of organizing, collecting, and archiving. And that's like something mm -hmm. very like close to like what I feel myself doing. I have all these jars that have like a a rock that I found and this has to have a label <laughs> of the story of what day and where I find it, why it's a treasure and what I could make with it, you know? And so I have a lot of that that I was collecting and I have pieces of paper that are from like that time of being in our house. It might be a little um, tiny book that, you know, one of my children made that just said like, I love you. And like that thing, such a treasure. So I was kind of collecting all these things. And I found that I was doing the same thing over and over in all of these handbound journals. So I was like, oh, I'm coming back to these as rituals. Mm -hmm. So I then went through multiple journals and a journal that my mother wrote before I could remember anything about like my life and her life with mm -hmm. me. Um, and I realized, oh, I'm doing like what my mom started doing. So I have like generations kind of of this kind of journaling and she would paste things in and put them and stuff them in pockets and things. I'm like, oh, this is like the origin of this <laughs> ritual that I do. So I started taking images and videos and collecting all of the rituals that were similar. The ones where we talk about what my name is and what my name means. Uh, the one where I listen to all the things I can hear right now. Uh, mm -hmm. The one where I think about something in the past or my past self talking to my current self and like giving me advice. Like I do these ritualistically. And so I put those things together and then organize them um, into like 18 segments. And so um, I took... <laughs> took all those pieces and made something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the whole story, <laughs> even in that. Um, yeah, that's amazing. I love, I love that um, through line that you both had of like connecting your past and your personal experiences with something that could be broader. Um, and I think that's kind of what portals are. And it's you know, it's so exciting to see how both of your pieces came to be uh, existing separately, but also having this community aspect to it. Um, and so I, yeah, I thank you both for, for joining me here on Producer Circle. And it's like a short conversation. I have honestly, I've learned so much. I'm so inspired by both of your pieces uh, and just you as creatives. Like I'm always like rooting for you and get excited about whatever you're working on. I'm like, yes. Um, and so I'd love for you to share with our uh, viewers where they can find more information about you, see what you're working on next um, so that they can keep up. Uh, we'll go to uh, Nicole. I, of course, have my show Indigo and Green on Philly Cam. So Saturdays at nine. Um, I also have an Instagram for Indigo and Green. Um, my textile work is ampersand textile, like the and symbol, because I can't just do one thing. It has to be so many. And you can find me on the all the socials and things there. Um, but I hope that you'll come and play with me sometimes. So I do workshops. And so come create art out in, in the world together in real life, not just in the internet. <laughs> yes. All right, Joy. So I have um, my website. Uh, it's a uh, Joy Waldinger at Wix uh, dot com. I also have a link tree that has honestly more more of the links uh, if folks want to stay connected. I do also have a newsletter that comes out on the full moon and the new moon of each month. Uh, we kind of go through different cycles with the newsletters. So the first batch we're all on the chakras. Um, this current batch, we're going through kind of a tour through the zodiacs, uh, the zodiac signs. Um, but yeah, my link tree has uh, my social media stuff too. So I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter at J Eliza Wall. Uh, so definitely connect, and I I love to collaborate. So definitely connect. Yes. Awesome. Thank you both so much for joining me here on Producer Circle. Uh, for our listeners, make sure you check out our guests and support them. Uh, let them know what you think of their wonderful pieces that you can uh, catch on Philly Cam, of course, on our website and on uh, the uh, channels. And uh, tune in next time on Producer Circle. We'll have some more guests talking about their work uh, coming up soon.